Hey, it's uh, Grant Lawrence has joined me here on uh, Mulligan Stew, the Mulligan Stew podcast, and the, strangely enough, Terry David Mulligan YouTube channel. It's strange how that works. I, my, my friend Elliot uh, said, uh, you should do a podcast, and I said, I don't know what that is, and he said, you're already doing it. Yes, I, 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 remember, I remember when uh, I saw you explaining that to everyone. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm glad you're in the mix. Uh, how long have you been a podcaster? Oh, I started, I, you know what, here's some trivia for you. I did the uh, first ever original podcast for CBC. It was the CBC Radio 3 podcast, and it was me talking about independent Canadian music. And I had the exact same reaction as you. I'm a radio guy. I talk on the radio. I talk on a microphone. What the heck is a podcast? Didn't know what it meant. Didn't know what it was. Didn't even like the sound of it. And my boss, who has who is a visionary named Steve Pratt, um, thank goodness, said, no, 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 it's just like a radio show. You just talk to the microphone and talk about the songs. It's just on demand. People can listen to it anytime they want. Still skeptical. Did it. And it was probably... I mean, this was, we're going back to 2005. It lasted for about 10 years. And we wrapped it up just before the podcast boom. <laughs> we were a bit ahead of our time. We thought it was over. But um, it was probably the biggest thing I've ever done in my career at CBC is that podcast. It was crazy with the hundreds of thousands of listeners and millions of downloads. And so it shows what I know. How many episodes? I don't know, over 10 years weekly. I mean, there was a lot of episodes. It was well into the hundreds, and uh, it was a lot of fun. And we had the interesting thing that I realized about the podcast is uh, because it's on demand, we were getting these expat Canadians that were writing in from the most bizarre places all over the world, like the middle of Mongolia and stood down in a mine. And I remember I got a big map of the world, and every time someone wrote in, some Canadian wrote in from some far-flung place, I would stick a little pin in the map. And by the end of that podcast, the end of that run, this this map was covered in push pins all over the world. And it was a pretty incredible experience. Did you take a photo? Probably. Oh, that's yeah. good. Um, let me just do fact-checking here, okay? Sure. Uh, CBC Radio 3 podcast? Yeah, done. The uh, CBC Radio 3 Sirius Satellite Radio. Uh, done. The top 20. Done. Well, the top 20, that's right. The top 20 is still on Sirius Satellite Radio on the on CBC Radio 1. Uh, the Radio 3 channel on Sirius no longer happening. But yeah, the top 20 is on Radio 1, CBC Music, which is the Radio 2 frequency, and on Sirius. So yeah, that's still that's still going. I have a question for you. It's a big one. Uh, you know about the Trans Canada Highwaymen? Yeah, I love them. Absolutely love them. Friends with all four. Yeah. Um, would you do a version of that? <laughs> uh, well, I'm a big, like you, I'm a big supporter of the Trans Canada Highwaymen. I think uh, they somehow have made those CanCon songs that we thought we were all so sick of really interesting again and fun. And um, maybe it's Stockholm Syndrome, but through their lens it sounds really fresh but would i do something like that like a super group or and who would like you that? do i i don't i don't i think maybe the show that i do now grant lawrence and friends is my version of go. a super group there's, there's and you're and you're physically on the road i'm physically on the road okay so the question leading out of that is which smuggler's song should the Trans Canada Highwaymen cover on volume two? Well, Chris Murphy likes to tease me relentlessly about the um, vacuousness, if that's a word, of uh, sm most of the Smuggler's cat uh, catalog. In fact, I, he did a little pull quote on the back of my uh, book, Dirty Windshields, about the Smugglers, and he said, Wow, this book is very relatable, except my band was actually good. <laughs> Your band, by the way, is mentioned uh, in just a second. I'll tell you about that. Uh, I, got, I wrote down uh, Shot Down or Especially You. Yeah. Oh, Especially You. Yeah, okay. Shot Down's but going they, they way do. to the beginning. Okay, but they could do, they they could could do, do Especially You. Especially You was a song that, one of the songs that you championed on Much West and actually ended up getting into rotation on the nation's music station yes. in the 90s. And, and that was back when, if 
a video got into rotation on much music, you would have people at your show. Simple as that. There's no rhyme or reason for the for the uh, questions that I'm asking. There's uh, just as I come along. Yeah, uh, what did you leave in the uh, the uh, Hall of Fame in Vegas, the Punk Hall of Fame? Oh yes, the Punk Rock Museum in Las Vegas, Nevada, opened by the guys from No Effects. Uh, they asked, I, I was kind of surprised, they asked for some artifacts, and we gave them one of my rubber boots. Uh, the smugglers used to wear rubber boots to represent our West Coast uh, home with rain and all that. And so one of the smugglers' rubber boots and a picture of me wearing the boots on stage at the Commodore is on display. But they could be anybody's boots. There's no writing on them, is there? There is. There's a there's a re, there's a red smugglers S in our our emblem, and it's it's in the Canadian cabinet. Okay, I'm gonna move on. Okay, um, because you have a sound check. Yeah, um, where will you be May 23rd? May 23rd is that? Uh, is this a trick question? Um, is it is that part of the is that the May long weekend? I'm probably in Desolation Sound. Why? Is it your birthday? What? Because May 23rd, 2004, the smugglers called it quits. Oh, my goodness. It's 20 years to the day. Oh, my goodness. Good research, Terry. You, you, uh, you stumped me and shocked me at the same time. 20 years. 20 years of no smugglers. We had our reunion blips, which, which kind of closed the, the loop on all that. Uh, around 2017 to 2019, we did a bunch of shows. So... Uh, that helped me close the chapter on that band, but I had no idea it's been 20 years. So um, you're doing stories and songs live now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Did you miss being on stage? Yes, I do. And in fact, you know, the great late John Mann, when Spirit of the West were wrapping up, I said, John, what are you going to miss? And he said, the applause yeah. and and I miss that I miss the audience interaction and I miss the the fun and and the touring a, a little bit but nowadays Terry I spent all those years in the smugglers traveling to downtowns going to the club room painted blacks stunk like urinal pucks and then smoke and beer I just want to go to nice places now so I just usually stick to BC and go to places like Sydney and the sea Bowen. Bowen, yeah. Well, they want an early and a late show. That's right, yeah. Three sold-out shows with a bunch of old pals from West Van. Ron Woodall was there. Nice. The A&W Root Bear nice. Science World Designer guy. And saw a whole bunch of old friends with that one. It's old CBC cronies, too. So tonight, you're at the Mary Winspear in Sydney. Pretty yeah. posh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Galliano. Yeah. Uh, where they love to say, how long are you staying? <laughs> Uh, Maple Ridge, so those that's one my, bang, bang, bang. And that's it. And even these three exhaust me. Just three in a weekend, I'm done for um, like six weeks. I see as you're touring uh, wine country in April, you're going to Oliver and Lake Country and the Effie and Kamloops that's right. with Joel Plaskett. Uh, yeah, Joel's on these three shows. And then on the show, the Joel, the Plaskett. Joel Plaskett from Halifax. Yeah, he's on these three. He's an old friend of mine. I've known him for 30 years, ever since his days in Thrush Hermit. I'm sure you've probably yeah. crossed paths with him then, too. And uh, we've just remained friends. And it's great to bring the East Coast to the West Coast and mix those stories and songs. But you drove up in that Volkswagen. I don't see any other band members. Are, no, they, no. are they on their own? We all travel separately um, because we all come from different places. Like Kiss. <laughs> Yeah, like Kiss, but in Kiss and Cars. Yeah, something like that. So who else is on stage tonight? So tonight it's going to be Joel Plaskett from Halifax. Ashley Ball, who just lives over the peninsula, right by uh, the ferry over there, the Brentwood Bay Ferry. And then um, we've got Lindsay Bryan, a great singer-songwriter from Victoria. And then we also have Bum, Andrew Malloy and Rob Nesbitt from Bum. Bum. One of my favorite underrated Victoria, B.C. pop punk bands from the 90s. And I, I've dragged them kicking and screaming out of retirement to play a couple of songs tonight. And more for me than anything. I see, so you're going through Gall Galliano. Uh, and then uh, Saturday um, tonight, yeah. uh, you are uh, at the... Uh, uh, the um, Theater, Act Theater in the Maple That's Ridge right. with Joel and right. Ashley and? And my lovely wife, Jill Barber. And, uh, you know, I, I grew up in West Vancouver and I was actually doing a comparison of 
the, the people that have come out of Maple Ridge and the people that have come out of West Van, pretty different. Do you have to adjust the rider for her? Uh, for Jill? Oh, yeah. This has got to be a really, really nice red wine. Yeah. But that's about it. By the way, you're passing on Main Island. Why is that? Well, we don't pass on any of them. We, we just do them in a kind of rotation, but I don't like to do them too frequently. So we've done the show on Saturna, Maine, Pender, Salt Spring, but we don't, you know, I, I have to, I, I need like a two year gap. You have friends back. on Maine. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kurt Dahl from the New Pornographers is on Maine Island. Uh, and, oh no. Limb Lifter? Yeah, yeah, the Limb Lifter guys, both brothers. I think studio? Are, yeah, nice studio wow. there. Yeah. Hoxley Workman played it a yeah. few months ago, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dirty Windshield. Yeah. Uh, there's two Dirty Windshields. Yeah, there's uh, the book, and then there's the podcast audiobook version, which I'm just wrapping up. It took forever, but I'm just wrapping it up, and uh, I put out the final chapter a couple weeks ago, and I'm doing the epilogue and the where are they now in the weeks to come. Uh, Return to Solitude. Now, hold on a second. During the windshields. Return to Solitude. Uh, Bailey, the. No, hold on a second. So, so now for the books. Yeah. Return to Solitude. Has it pr been printed again? Well, it's gone. It's it's been reprinted a few times. It it came out. That's the sequel to my first book, Adventures in Solitude. So the Solitude ones are about life and desolation sound. And so that was my most recent book, Return to Solitude. It came out a year or so ago. Did really well. Uh, very happy with it. Back on the charts, as they say. And uh, yeah, still touring it. Bailey the Bat? That's the kids' book. Yeah. That's for, um, you know, like five, six, seven year olds. Basically, I used to tell my kids at bedtime stories about this little bat that couldn't sleep, you know, nocturnal animal but wanted to be awake all day long. And I would tell and make up these stories for my kids. And then uh, a publisher approached me saying, hey, um, we're thinking about you for a kid's book. Do you have any ideas? And I said, yeah, I got this idea about this bat that can't sleep. So we created that book, Bailey the Bat. And Lonely Under the Rink can still be found? Yeah, it can be. All the books are still in print. I don't let them go out of print. I still sell them and sign them at all my shows. You can get them on the BC Ferries, thank God. Uh, I love a captive audience. Ah. And By the way, uh, you can tell how important this interview is to me. I use my, my yellow I highlighter. See that. Yeah, yeah, it's good. And it's amazing that you can read any of that. I went back and checked out your last post just before the holidays yeah. on the website. And you talked about traveling in songs and stories, the mm -hmm. ca uh, cavalcade. Um, you did that holiday version yeah. that you did in East Vancouver at the Culch. Yeah. Did you record that? No, you know it's damn it, man. It, I know it's a shame that I don't record them. People ask about that a lot. A couple of them we recorded early on, and they were uh, holiday specials on CBC Radio. But haven't recorded any in a while. I I should be podcasting them, but I also like the fleeting nature of them because I after all this stuff we went through in the pandemic, I, I like it when people are physically present. And I like the experience in the moment that unless you're there, you're there. And if you're not there, you're going to miss it. And there's no getting it again. Well, I do a thing uh, called Christmas in the Round, which came from, spun out of our my brief time at Roundhouse Radio in Vancouver, yeah. Yeah, so in, the, in the East End. Um, and it was Bar because Barney was doing his Christmas tours yeah. and they were together. And I, I said, can you one more, just one off, just come in, we'll do it in the boardroom. We'll shut the, the, the things and we'll do it. And we've done four now. Oh, yeah. Um, the last one was on zoom with Mary McLaughlin back in, in Toronto. Oh, yeah. Um, this is the first time I've seen something in front of me. They said, there's a possibility here that we could down the road have this as a Christmas special for for folks on the air on yeah, CKUA. Yeah, you could you could we, we could do that. We could do that for sure. Yeah. Oh, by the way, that holiday version had I love Jill and Luke uh, yeah. Barber and Dan Mangan yeah. and Charlie. And and then yeah, Dan, that's right. Dan and, on, and uh, Don, Don Pemberton, Pemberton who of course ho hosts her own show on yes, CKUA. Yes, he does. Yeah, that's right. And the kids. Yes, my kids were up there as well, Josh and Grace. And okay, so Josh has got the Blue Jay Valley, right? That's right. That's his rock band. He's 10 years old. 
Uh, could be one of the youngest rock bands in the world. They're all eight, nine, and ten. They write their own songs. They put out their own record. They, they have their own merch. They have their own merch. They have T-shirts. They sell out shows in East Van. When Nardwar and I were putting on shows on the North Shore when we were kids, they would not sell out. Uh, we couldn't get. It was hard to to fill those church basements, and somehow these kids at age eight, nine, ten are doing. Maybe it's because I'm their dad, and I it took thirty you years think? of experience <laughs> to figure it out. <laughs> but uh, Nardwar keeps saying they sold out. How'd they sell that place out? Oh, they're mopping the floor. Uh, EP uh, EP comes out in March. We like yeah, to rock. Uh, yeah, uh, March first. It's out. It's a four song EP. We like to rock, featuring their localized hit no school um where they have a line in there no school don't like the teacher and and there's a line in there pd day right now all year long oh wow something like that Uh, every parent's nightmare Uh, by the way i wrote to the merch people and said do you make anything in xxl oh nice yeah there are adult t-shirts but who gets that who's the who's the merch director you're looking at Jill? No, <laughs> mostly me. By the way, I like the fact in their bio um, of the Blue Jay Valley band with Josh, your yeah. son, uh, talked about their influences. Yes. Uh, the Hives, Gob, yeah. Ramones, yeah. Sloan, yeah. but no sign of the smugs. I know. <laughs> I know. There's no smugglers <laughs> on the list. It's so embarrassing. Yeah, it's true. Adventures in Solitude, by the way, that your book from 2010, yeah. just fantastic. Yeah, uh, there was a spin-off audio in the podcast, um, and real life characters. Um, uh, Russell the Hermit. Somebody approached you about maybe making a film about Russell the Hermit. That's right. Uh, a, a Hollywood director who I had never heard of, um, but he swore to God he really was, and he listed his some of his shows. He approached me and he said, I want to make a movie. I want to make a movie about your first book. Um, but it reminded me, his pitch reminded me of that that movie with t- t- Tim Robbins called The Producer or something like that. It's kind of a dark Hollywood farce where these two earnest writers come in and pitch this kind of art film. And by the end of the movie, the film stars Bruce Willis and everything's exploding <laughs> all around and so that's kind of what, are, like, I wrote this book about my real life and my parents and the real characters. And this Hollywood director had this idea where it suddenly turned into a crime caper where there's bank robberies. And I'm like, there's no bank up there. What are you talking about? And and that me and the hermit would go on the run, like the getaway style. And who did you want to cast as the hermit? Liam Neeson. Yeah, that didn't work. Okay. Yeah. However, I do have a suggestion for the casting. If you oh, ever okay. want to do okay. it, it really should be uh, uh, Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges, yeah, that'd be great. He is the yeah. hermit. Yeah, for some reason they wanted to cast David Cross as me. I'm just kidding. Yes. I, no, I, no, they, they do they it. Didn't, we didn't get that far. Okay. I actually dropped the conversation. We stopped the conversation when uh, the guy went rogue with me on on the uh, on the script, and that was it. And never heard from him again. By the way, Desolation Sound. Yeah. I looked up Desolation. The word Desolation. Mm-hmm. A state of complete emptiness, bleak, stark, misery, sadness, gloom. Yeah. You, you are none of those things. <laughs> no, you are none of those oh, things. Thank you. Thank By the way, uh, and I kept going, I said, uh, there's a, a, a death metal band from Oregon yeah. uh, called Desolation Sound. Oh, interesting. Uh, uh, and they have a single called, no, an album called Where Darkness Dwells wow. on Blood Soaked Records. Oh, God. Jeez, that's all very foreboding. And you want Jeff to go into this business? Yeah, well, that's kind of one of the things that, um, uh, Josh, yeah, that's one of the interesting things that kind of attracts and keeps people away from Desolation Sound is the name. It yeah. is foreboding. Yeah. And weird stuff continues to happen up there to this day. Well, they, you do, you play games up there. A cron, Chronicle? Yeah. Uh, Crokinole. Crokinole. It's an Eastern uh, Canadian game where you flick a uh, puck. It was made by the Mennonites to get through the winters. It's a wooden board shaped in an octagon stop sign shape. And you shoot a little wooden puck or a crokinole for the uh, middle hole. And okay. it's, it's kind of a cross between, it's a tabletop version of shuffleboard or curling that that kind of throwing throwing sandbags yeah or uh like you know bocce ball where you bounce other balls away is full moon float 
what it is? Yeah, yeah. The full moon float in Desolation Sound every July. Uh, all the boats gather at a place called Sea Lion Rock. We tie up to each other and we all crack our favorite beverage and we, we just let the currents of Desolation Sound float us around as the moon rises over the coast mountains. What is Ladies Whiskey Night? That's an event that Jill put together in the summer in Desolation Sound where she invites all the ladies of Desolation Sound over and they get absolutely plastered on whiskey. It's very dangerous. I don't like it. Do you know Leroy Stagger? Of course, very well. Lives right around here. He uh, he hosts uh, a, a show for CKUA called Dirty Windshield Love. That's where I got the name. It was a song of Leroy Stagger, uh, Dirty Windshields. What next? The next thing for me is this Adventures in Solitude book that you mentioned 14 years ago it came out. It just never seems to end, whether it's weird movie pitches or kids' books. So the new thing is that it is being turned into a kids' book for the 50th anniversary of Harbor Publishing. So the children's yeah, <laughs> illustrated version will be out this fall on Harbor. And it, it begs the question, re-asked question, there's somebody celebrating the 50th anniversary. Yeah. You have a 20th anniversary coming up on May 23rd for the Smugs. Amazing. You could re-release something. You could do it like a deluxe version yeah. of something. Yeah. You could do a one-off. Well, there is a lot of talk about that. We had a, we did have a anniversary, 30th anniversary album of an earlier Smugglers record come out a year or two ago called In the Hall of Fame. And there's talk about reissuing a couple of the other records when we get to their anniversaries as well. So those are, that's all in the works as well. Is there another book coming? Yeah, I think so. I just don't know what it'll be. So maybe, there's not. Maybe it'll be about the CBC. <laughs> a tell-all. And what's the... Um What's going to be the end result of radio? It seems to be radio? Up on radio itself. I think TV is in more trouble than like traditional cable television is in more trouble than uh, than anything else. But uh, I think radio will always survive because it's an essential service. If if the if the poop hits the fan, what do people reach for? Now they might reach for their phone, but if they're in their car. They're going to reach for the radio, and they're going to f try to find a station to tell them what is going down. And so I think radio will always be around. I've been wrong before. Do you recognize uh, the Grammys, the Junos yeah, uh, yeah. awards? I mean, do Absolutely. you? But I mean, look at the, four, the the way they're built now. Yeah, there's not a lot of room for uh, people like. Uh, Bonnie Raitt, she yeah. wins her four. Well, they just did, the Grammys just did a great tribute to Joni Mitchell. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they, they had her. And, and they, they do, rec I, I always believe you got to know where you come from to know where you're going. And I thought the Grammys this year did a great job. I mean, with Joni Mitchell, she was playing both sides now. And Alison Russell, the newcomer, uh, who spent many years in Vancouver with Poe Girl, she was on stage with... Uh, this these two great Canadian musicians and I, I saw that as a kind of a passing of the torch in some way I saw it as very symbolic and, and quite beautiful uh, and finally um, if you were if your life story is going to be played by somebody let's say it's going to be played by somebody okay. so, somebody's going to do, throw money to the wind okay. and do your life story yeah which member of the Beachcombers would actually, which actor from the Beachcombers would play you? Well, I'm, you know, like you, I'm friends with Jackson Davies, but he's way too tall. Yeah. Great guy, so funny. Unfortunately, a lot of that cast is now gone, but it had to be Relic. It has to be Relic. I mean, come on. I mean, he's the coolest. The crazy thing about where I live in East Vancouver is you look around and everyone's dressed like Relic now. <laughs> everyone's got a little toque, the Mac jacket. They don't, the know, who, they don't know who Relic is no. or, or Robert. But. popped up, the, the, the canvas pants rolled up, the Converse sneakers. They're dressed exactly in, you go to any brewery, it's like a sea of Relics in the tasting room. I mean, he had no idea the trend that he was setting 50 years ago. So, yeah, it'd be Relic for sure. Uh, finally, I, I would be uh, not doing my job if I didn't ask about Jill and her new album. Yeah, she is releasing her 
third French album this June. It's called Encore, uh, and it's all French songs. This time, she's done all original songs. This time, it's all covers, and she is going to be touring the jazz festivals this summer, so we'll, she'll be in and out of Desolation Sound all summer long, and I'm sure her other French records are the most successful records in her catalog. So uh, hoping for big things with this one, too. Did you hear our heart-hitting interview with the uh, Edmonton Folk Festival? Yes, that was awesome. I loved it. And I love that you are still going to that festival and that you're still connecting with artists and that you're still doing everything that you do. So thank you very much for, for it all and for meeting me in this little greasy spoon. What's the opening number tonight? Oh, I'm going to do a little bit about the fairies and what it's like to try to to have a reservation and try to make the reservation and try to get to the terminal and over in langdale horseshoe bay they do the i don't know the yellow ticket system yeah. and it's just like getting that yellow ticket it's like willy wonka level um so i'm gonna do one of those which a lot of people always relate to and then I'll probably throw in something about a nude potluck and desolation sound or a just something boats people just love to hear about the boats you can also ask your audience how many cars can you get on the mill bay uh, burlington ferry oh, sure 21 no 19 19 i was pretty close yeah. pretty close yeah i've been on that i've been left behind on that one yeah. and just made it and wow. yeah that's that's an old school ferry that's for sure what's your website grantlawrence.ca bless you and Thank by you. the way oh i got the last question do you think in our lifetime we will see the Vancouver Canucks win the Stanley Cup. Man, I've written a book about it, about the first three times that they almost did it in the lonely end of the rink. Um, we've, we're, I feel like the team goes in like 10-year waves, and you know, we have saw the 82 Canucks do it, the 94 Canucks do it, the 2011 Canucks do it, and so here we are. We're, we're right there in that perfect wave again where we're cresting up, and we've got all the pieces, so I'll just say, because I'm an optimist, yes, we will. Thank you, Grant. Thank you, Terry. Always great to hang out with you.